Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Vernon Van Waters with Van Waters Labradors and today we are going to go over some of the equipment that I use to train my dogs for gunfire. How I introduce the dogs to gunfire, okay? So um, I kind of went over this in a previous video, but I want to be very specific this time and kind of walk you through how I do that, okay? So we're going to do that today. First thing is, is initially when I'm working with the puppy, um, at a very, very young stage, earlier the better when it comes to this, okay? So you'll see a lot of people clap their hands. Uh, we do that, no big deal. Everybody does it, right? Uh, to get the dogs used to a lot of, uh, you know, loud noises. Clapping your hands really works good. Just a real loud clap just like that, okay? Um, you continue to do that. Um, some other things that you can do, and this is very elementary, so bear with me here. We'll get into it a little bit more in depth. Um, is use pans, pots and pans. You can take them, flip them upside down, and bang on them. Uh, again, from a distance, and work your way closer to the puppy, okay? So you're at a distance, and you're working your way closer to the puppy, and just banging on the pots and pans, and, and kind of working your, your way through that, okay? So uh, clapping your hands, pots and pans. Um, again, from a distance, working your way closer. Um, another little tidbit that would probably help um, help you in this is that always put a puppy in a place that they're comfortable with or they have positive associations with meaning we don't want to put the puppy all by itself okay this is usually where a lot of people make a mistake is they'll put the puppy like in a crate or in a pen out in the middle of nowhere or whatever um, it's a lot of potential fears there okay because it's by itself it's not relying on something else to keep it comfortable. For example, uh, if you have two dogs together, uh, a lot of times, especially like an older dog and a younger dog, the younger dog's gonna look to the older dog is like, how am I supposed to react to this? Is it okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, am I supposed to be afraid of this? They build off of that. So if you have other puppies that you can do this with is ideal. <clears throat> um, or put them in a place that they're comfortable with. Okay, so. Let me stop right there. Let's just say you have a puppy, you're doing this on your own, you're doing this gunfire thing, okay? Uh, this is critical to do this before you get into any gun dog, waterfowl, upland training. Don't even waste your time with in, like detailed, hardcore training until you get this involved first, okay? Because you go spend in five, six, seven thousand dollars on a started dog and you go to pull the trigger and that dog can't take a gunshot, you just wasted your money, okay? So first thing is, is gunfire. And <clears throat> you can start with the small pots and pans, but you are on your own, it's just you and your puppy. How do you do that with just you and your puppy, okay? Positive associations, okay, that's, that's the key. Associate your puppy with something that's fun. How do you do that? Glad you asked. All right, so we've got the duck call. If you're using, if you're doing just strictly upland, you can do different calls like that. They've got electronic calls, different things. This isn't necessary, but I like to put the sounds with the fun, okay? <laughs> Tennis ball, squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. And for upland, ooh, will that focus or not? Hmm, probably not. Anyway, sorry about that. Anyway, pheasant scent. There it goes. Pheasant scent, duck scent, whatever birds that you're gonna be hunting, to be quite frank, it probably doesn't matter at this rate uh, what scents on the ball, but just put a little dab on there, okay? So I'm going to show you how to do it. Just go like this. Let it drip on there. Let it dry, okay? Get it all over your fingers. Make your fingers stink. Doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Actually, it does. Okay, so get it all over the ball, right? Now we're playing with the puppy, rolling the ball out. Uh, we could do calls. If we're doing ducks, you could do a duck call um, right in. Um, and roll the ball out, positive associations, okay? Then you're clapping your hands, you're making a lot of noise in the background. The biggest fear on that puppy is gonna be from behind him, okay? So if, if, well, just put yourself in that position. If, if you're walking away and it's, you know, say it's dark out here and someone pops off something behind you, you're gonna come uh, unglued, maybe. Uh, depends on what kind of person you are. Uh, anyway, the puppy is no different, okay? If you get the puppy in an uncomfortable situation and you scare them, it's over, 
well, maybe not quite over, but it's gonna be very difficult to move forward from there. Okay, so, positive associations, you could play with the tennis ball, little squeaker squeaker, it's got the sound, it's got the smell, okay? You could back it up with the duck call, okay? I won't bore you with my duck calls, because, yeah. All right, now, the next thing. Once we get them used to positive associations, hearing the claps, hearing some louder bangs, where do we go next, okay? Now, keep in mind, as I talk about this the entire time, it's positive associations with everything. Do not move forward with your puppy on any of this level unless the first one is done correct or, or right. You make noises, you're, you're, you're standing over the, uh, the puppy with a pot, banging it, and that puppy can care less, okay? That's when you know it's ready to move on, okay? And typically, it takes two to three days uh, from each level. Okay, the next level is going to be going to your dummy launcher. Okay, now a lot of guys might use this for a single purpose. I use this for a dual purpose. Uh, maintenance really quick on this is this. Let me get it where I can turn this. I can't because it's got too much oil on it. Great. I should have checked it before the video. <laughs> anyway, uh, you would unscrew this little screw right here. I put it on there too tight yesterday because I just oiled this thing up and you pour the oil down in the bottom and it comes up through here through here and, and then i put oil down in here so that it would come out through here okay and it gets it all greasy and nice and oily and then we clean the gunpowder off right through here there's a lot of gunpowder that gets right around there we clean all that off keep this clean okay this tool or instrument would probably run you about 120 dollars 150 depending on where you bought it it might be cheaper I got this actually on sale years ago for $99.99 and that came with some dummies whatever anyway uh, this is what I use now I use this as a multi-purpose tool okay so I, I do this when it's empty so they can get the sound of a gunshot cycle or a gun rather cycling right get them used to hearing that pop okay also, I let them smell it because there's gun oil and gun powder right there. Let them smell it, get acquainted with that. They're gonna have to get acquainted with it anyway, right? So get them used to that. Baby steps, real quick, nothing nothing long ago, okay? Then, we talked about this in a previous video. They have different blanks. Boy, that camera does not wanna focus. They're, eh, I don't know. Hopefully y'all can see that. There you go. Anyways, uh, they are blanks different levels 22 calibers and you can see the power load on the bottom each box holds a hundred okay this is green okay so for those that are beyond this and understand how to do this I apologize we're trying to get everybody up to par here so you've got that you put your little bullet right in there again these are blanks okay you close it which comes down like this and you hold it like this. We talked about in a previous video, if you have a dummy on here, like that, and you shoot it like this, you could probably handle a green one, but if you have a red one in here and you shoot it like that and you don't have much support in here as far as muscle, or you're not used to doing this, you're gonna have some pain right in there. So for those that are not used to doing it like that, do it like this, because when it shoots off, boom, okay? Very friendly, user friendly, okay? Otherwise, what we do is get used to the puppy, getting around and then we do this okay then it's discarded you open this up and then you would push back like this well that camera is not working on me today see how that goes away from it it pulls that shell right out of there I'll, I'll show you again see that there you go all right then you just keep working now I usually go overboard on this and I will work my way out from 50 yards and I work my way where I'm standing right over top of the puppy okay 50 yards outside and I'm standing right over the puppy and this is like an eight nine ten week old puppy okay no big deal they can handle this as long as I've done my first steps correctly and all the sound training all the socialization positive associations okay boom boom I will go through a box of these green ones no problem, okay? Now, the benefit for me is yeah, I usually do more than one puppy at a time just because uh, this 
and all these bullets can rack up very quickly in cost so we try to be uh, mindful of that okay so then the next step is we go to the yellow box they're louder and I'm not shooting these off because I have no earplugs out here and my ears will be ringing for hours next box next load red again the power levels are different so this one's five it goes up to six this one's four and it goes down to three and again they vary on that the loads will sound louder when you are shooting a dummy off of them okay keep that in mind they will sound louder when you're shooting a dummy off of it because it has resistance okay and the resistance it those two holes there it puts that power out and that's what shoots it off okay but it will be loud so wear ear here hearing protection uh, is a must uh, otherwise you'll be you'll be hurting okay so we work on that for probably week and a half two again I've got a five month old dog many of you have seen videos of and we're training and we are still using the red on her to shoot the orange off the orange dummies which is right here uh, we start with the white ones and then we'll integrate back and forth or go back and forth integrate one or the other in, in and out and we work with those and then we have these dummies here um, we also have pheasant dummies that we use for upland and then we have dummy launchers bird launchers um, it's all great okay just really quick on the dummy launcher like this DTI is what I use here this is great sport dog makes one just like it and it's they work both the same okay there is a difference between the bird launcher the actual bird launcher itself sport dog makes one and TDI makes one okay I'm gonna I need to do another video on both of those contraptions and and uh, which ones I would recommend for what but I'm gonna do just real quick here go over I'm just gonna touch base on it just real quick here the DTI bird launcher for live birds okay is just for that live birds meaning you have a live bird in there you hit the button poof, it goes up um, you have to have a live bird in there if you go to shoot a dummy off out of there which is what I like to do and I'll get to that in a second it only goes up about four or five feet falls to the ground to joke right okay the sport dog they their contraption is a little bit smaller so that's the negative uh, however they have a it's so tightly spring-loaded that you can actually put dummies in there such as this right here and it will pop these suckers up like ridiculous okay so if you're like me I don't like to just put a frozen bird or a live bird in a thing just to not necessary that's what I'm trying to say okay when we can use these okay you read between the lines what I'm trying to say okay when we can use these for our birds put the sin over it let it shoot up now there is going to come a time for those that hunt like myself and others we have to use live birds that's all there is to it but why use them more than we have to right all right next step uh, so just go back to that if you're using dummies like I do for my birds to train you're gonna want the sport dog brand it's I think it's a little bit more expensive I think they're like eight hundred dollars maybe nine uh, for the contraption and the controller comes with preloaded sounds but the sport dog brand is awesome by the way I, I'm not getting paid to say this I'm just telling giving you my experience okay and this is all my opinion of my experience so please take that note as well okay the next step after we've gone through the dummy launcher and we've gone through all those sounds again it's a multi uh, task tool because I could shoot dummies off of here getting the dog juice looking up or straight or or I can roll one even so if you shoot one on a fly boom and it rolls into the water uh, or on land if it's an upland situation you also want to get the dog uses watching the ground mid-range high range farther back etc okay then you get you're working this and again I don't take this out of the equation at all I use this all the time I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds I've shot through this little rascal works great okay then I go to the actual shotgun okay this is a Mossberg it's a, actually a youth model here's my I even kept my sticker on there right made in the US all right anyway that's for another day uh, my little Mossberg youth model shotgun this is a 20 gauge okay now notice how short that barrel is okay and the reason I bring that up is because a lot of guys will say well I got a 20 gauge here this ain't very 
loud. Well, this rascal here is louder than my 12 gauge because of the distance, the barrel is so short on this. Look, look, look at this. If I can get my finger on there, there we go. <laughs> it's so short from there to there, it's not very long, okay? And I don't know the exact measurement on this, I kind of forget. But, um, you know, I always check, make sure it's empty, which it is, there's no cartridges in there, but I will still remain, you know, make sure I keep my finger up, you know, gun safety, gun safety. Um, and we're on safety there. See, this would be fire right there. Red safety. Okay. So we're, we're safe. Anyway, um, then I come around the dog. I let him kind of smell it, get used to seeing this around me. And I just get him used to hearing that. Okay. Cycle. Now this is a Mossberg. This action is so sloppy. Listen to that. Of course, I've shot this probably close to a thousand times. But cycle. And I get him used to hearing that cycling. And then what I will do is even put it on my shoulder and cycle. Okay, I'm actually doing this, I shoot this way. So I got this. Over and over and over and over. Like that, right? Now, then what I'll do is I'll have a little helper, if I have a little helper with me that day, is I'll do this, and I'll have him fire off this, but I'll go back to the green color, so it's a little lighter color, okay? And every dog's a little different, so don't, th this isn't concrete, the way you do this. Everything fluctuates from dog to dog, okay? I know some trainers, they'll do it just like it's this way or it's the highway. Um, I also know some doctors that will do surgery and it's this way and that's how they're going to perform surgery. I also know the best surgeons is they take from patient to patient to patient. Okay. Same thing with dogs. When you train dog, it's one patient to the next or one client or one puppy, however you want to look at that. Either way. Anyway, cycle, gun. Okay. Please keep in mind, just because this is a 20 gauge does not mean it's quieter, okay? It just, this is a youth model. It's smaller for my, I have boys that they shoot, and so they can handle this a little bit more friendly. I use this because I can one hand it when I'm trying to run a camera or run something else. I can do one of these booms. I don't recommend that. I'm just saying that that's what I do, okay? Anyway, there you go. Cycle over and over and over, okay? Now, you have different loads that we put in this gun. Once they're used to that and they're used to going, now they have the association with this and this. So this is the boom, this is the gun, okay? Then we go to, um, what I start off with is cheap loads, eight shot, okay? I don't know if you can see that right there, eight shot, right? I think they make it eight and a half, I think. 20 gauge, they're really light, here you go. Right there, little little rascals, okay? Eight shot, basically, those are for like target loads, for shooting clay pigeons, or the little clay disc, for those that don't know what a clay pigeon is. Uh, that's what that's for, 20 gauge, really light load. I mean, <clears throat> quiet. And I will probably go through a whole box of these with a dog. Um, oh, by the way, these are two and three quarter inch. Two and three quarter inch, eight shot. So. I don't know how much lighter you can get, okay? Um, there is probably 50 in here, I'm guessing. No, 25, sorry, I was wrong. 25, 25 a box. So I go through about a box or two. Again, it depends on the dog, okay? Um, per this shot, okay? Then we'll move up. Now, what I do, because my guns are different lengths in the barrels and the different sounds, okay? I will bounce back between the guns. Okay, this gun here, this is, that is a full choke in there, okay? My other gun also, I believe, has a full choke. Then, once we jump up to that, we'll go from the eight shot to a seven and a half, okay? So, uh, Remington, seven, seven and a half. And here, here they are right here, seven and a half, and they're two and three quarters. Okay, this is for a 12 gauge, that's why it's bigger, it's round, more round, circumference, um, it's, it's, it's thicker, okay. I use that, and again, I bounce back and forth, and now, let, let me take the time to ex explain this. The higher the number, lighter the load. Lower the number, heavier the load, just for those that may not know that. Okay, then we'll jump over to, uh, we'll stay with the 12 gauge, and we'll go to a six shot, okay. And this is, um, again, two and three quarters. I'm not sure if you all want to see all these bullets or not, but I don't think it's really necessary, but we're going to do it anyway, I guess. 
because I already opened them and started. So there you go. Um, Winchesters, Remingtons. I, I, you know, basically I buy the cheapest ammunition I can find. I clean my guns regularly, so I don't think it really matters. Okay, and then what we do, we go back to the 20 gauge, and and let me say this real quick. Do not move forward with any of these bullets or shots until that dog can handle every one of them at 50 yards and you work in, okay, and you're shooting right over the top. So your puppy is basically right down like this on the ground and you're like this over, boom, and they can handle that all day long, okay? And a lot of training goes into that, okay? Then once we get to, we keep working our way up, then we'll get to back to the 20 gauge, okay? And there we go, now she's focused. 20 gauge, and these are five shot, three inches. Okay, three inch, five shot. Eventually we'll get down to a three inch or a three and a half, four shot. And by that time, you're already in the water with this dog a long time ago, and they're doing dummies. You can do live birds if you wish, but Go nice and slow and take your time. Shoot over it. There's many videos I have where I'm shooting over dogs. You guys can see it. I've got dogs that I'm just boom, 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 right over top of them. It doesn't bother them a bit, okay? I've got families that have just purchased an eight-week-old puppy for me, and they're like, well, I don't need all this, this stuff. Like, why would you shoot over my puppy or around my puppy at eight weeks old? Why would you do that? Well, how many of you have a puppy that when thunderstorms come or Fourth of July comes, which is not too far away from us now that when they hear them big booms they run and they go either under the couch if they can't get underneath the couch or the bed or they run to a room where they feel safe or they go somewhere or back to the vehicle or they or they just sit there and shiver and you got to medicate them unfortunately to calm them down i know there's many people that are going to watch this video that have experienced that very thing okay i think i can say most of my puppies don't have that problem at least those that I'm aware of. I, I, I don't have that problem where our puppies are, are scared of things. Now I've had uh, situations where uh, families will do stuff that is not very wise to their dogs. Um, and that's a different subject that would cause them to fear. That's why we train our dogs, okay? Train, 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 train. We don't wanna cause fear. If you don't know what you're doing, um, that's why I'm making these videos. Cause I, I, I hear the stories all the time. I went and I bought this $3,500 puppy because it has field champions, amateur field champions, national amateur field champions, national champions, and it's just this awesome blood uh, bl bl uh, bloodlines for just awesome hunting dogs. They go out and spend all this money for this puppy. They spend all this money to train the dog. They go out there and they shoot the first time and the dog's back to the truck. Okay, I hear it all the time. So. It starts when they're young and integrating this in when they're little guys and working themselves up and, and don't move forward until you got this gun stuff down. That's why at eight weeks old, it's very important or prior <clears throat> to really integrate this in, okay? So this, I, I hopefully I didn't bore the daylights out of you guys and hopefully this, is, this was entertaining uh, or more or less informational for everybody so that you can take your time and you know, you want a good dog, A, you want a good dog. We all want good dogs. But even those that are not into the gunfire, you can have a good pet that is a family member, part of the family. And when you do go out for 4th of July, you can take uh, the fur baby with you and don't have to worry about it. Now I wouldn't take an eight week old puppy out there either way because they haven't had that specific experience, okay? Unless you're out here with us and then you could get pretty close to that experience, okay? Uh, there's little secrets that I have to, to be able to get to that point, okay? Um, you want about to be able to do that, okay? So that's why we do it with uh, all our puppies and shoot around them and get them used to this. We get them used to fireworks, get them used to thunderstorms so that they're prepared for you, okay? It's not 100% guaranteed, but we do the best we can, all right? So those that are watching by Facebook, uh, we appreciate you. And... Uh, you're uh, watching this through a link through YouTube, and now you're on YouTube, so we ask that you, that those that are watching now on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the notifications, turn them on, hit the bell. Like this video if you would, please. It helps us uh, with the algorithms through uh, YouTube. We've gotta get our subscriptions up a ton higher. Um, 
and many of you are watching these videos and are not subscribing so we would just appreciate if you would subscribe that would help us out a ton so uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to do these videos a lot of time a lot of time to upload them for any youtuber um, you can talk to every one of them it takes a ton of time to make these videos they cost a lot and uh, by you subscribing and liking the videos it helps all youtubers okay so we put this this um, what do you want to call it these videos together put them on the online they're free to you but it costs us a lot so um, by you subscribing it actually allows us to uh, eventually uh, hopefully maybe depending on uh, maybe recoup some of that cost okay so that's basically why why we ask what we ask um, I'm very transparent and open person so um, I like to be treated like I would or I like to treat others like I want to be treated so um, hopefully you all can sense that and feel that um, if you have any questions about this any comments please leave it in the comment section below either YouTube Facebook any social media platform leave those comments there if you have questions um, you can go on Facebook and my phone number is there and you can call me I'm a little old-fashioned I'm not very good with the, the texting and stuff like that as far as through messenger um, because what I have to say usually gets drawn out pretty long uh, because I like to be thorough on my explanations uh, for many of you that have purchased puppies from us before adopted puppies from us before you know uh, all about that <laughs> so um, anyway you can reach out to me and I can explain this a little bit more in depth to you over the phone if, if need be but you can never ever go too slow on this okay never 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 I don't care what anybody says you can never go too slow but you can always go too fast always so take your time and have fun make it fun for your dog and train 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 till the next video guys thanks a lot